Hey everyone, so we are out in Taiwan for Computex coming up, and we stopped by one of the Acer headquarters locations before the show to check out this. So this is the Acer Orion X. We actually talked about this in the news not too long ago, and uh, one of the things we commented on was it being a properly unique small form factor mini ITX system. So now we get to do a, a disassembly of this, show you some of the features of the case. I do think it's really interesting for our audience, important to note that there is a plan to bring this DIY. So it's a mini ITX case. What we have in front of us is a pre-built and it's got a 4090, 3900K, which is how Acer will initially sell it. But they're hoping to bring it to uh, DIY standalone, just the case sometime in the second half of this year, uh, if all goes to plan. There's also a really interesting GPU in here. So there's a 4090 that has a self-contained liquid cooling solution. It's not the first time we've seen that, but it's been a while since we've seen it. So uh, Asus, for example, had a design like this several years ago. Um, we've also seen sort of the Alienware solution, which was a little bit different. They had a, a sort of a two slot design. So we're gonna look at that briefly as well. We'll have a separate video with a teardown, but really interesting mini ITX box. So let's get started with it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Fantex and the G300A Mesh Edition case. The Fantex G300A revives the A-series approach to airflow that Fantex began really pushing with the P400A that we liked previously. The new G300A comes in a few variants based on fan count and uses the Fantex ultra-fine front mesh that allows for a higher airflow without double stacking filters, as we've shown in the past. The G300A Eclipse is a compact tower supporting ATX boards, and you can learn more at the link in the description below. This is, uh, we're told, inspired by basically like a space station layout. Front of the case is an acrylic sheet. Uh, there's no ventilation here, so it's not covering airflow or anything like that. This is just covering uh, some LED lenses and some design elements. All of the airflow is the sides and the top. So this side is, uh, I think, actually, let's just pop it open so I can double check. So I'm going to take off the acrylic plate first. This is just magnetic, not tempered glass. Then there's these latches. And this is kind of what reminds me a little bit of what Lian Lee's been doing lately, which is Lian Lee has become like massively obsessed with mechanical elements of the design, but they're pretty cool. So this one left, left side maps to the left panel. You pull it, panel releases, and it is semi-captive, so it's not gonna fall out uh, like that. Pull the panel. So there's the GPU side, we'll come back to that. And then on this side, and this case, by the way, is a uh, technically is, is pre-production sample, but it's, it's pretty close to final for sizing and everything. So here's the other panel. And for the uh, ventilation here, mesh hole sizing is, is uh, they're not going with like the ultra fine that you might see on Fantex or something. Fairly open design though. Um, so no dust filters for the sides or for the top of the case. Uh, and then power supplies here, liquid cooling pump for the CPU. Uh, there's a top mounted 240 millimeter radiator. For the rest of the specs, a mini ITX board. So all these are standard form factor components, which is really important because I think with SIs or OEMs, with pre-builds, uh, we have been trained to be extremely cynical anytime there's a pre-built uh, of any kind of unique design, for example, Alienware, where everything ends up completely irreplaceable and proprietary, which is terrible for the industry and the environment and also the system. But in this case, it's a standard form factor ITX board. So benefits you because when it's sold standalone, you can actually put something in it uh, or swap the parts. Tops a standard 240 mil rad. There's a standard small form factor power supply on the side over here. Uh, two dim for the RAM and then SSDs. There's one mounted on this daughter board that goes into the motherboard, and then underneath it, there's another SSD location. Uh, and then let's go to the top of the case. So this, this is what we talked about in the news video as well. Really, I, like I said, it's all kind of interesting mechanical stuff. So this is a non-final, but it's supposed to kind of click into place like that and act as a headphone stand. And Acer's playing around with the idea of what else they might be able to sock it in, for example, or accessories they could attach and sell to it for some DLC for your case. Uh, but otherwise we can collapse this. <laughs> this is like, always try not to be the guy to break the sample at the show. Uh, so we pull that off and that then gives us an option to uh, pull this latch. Now, technically this is the pre-built, which means there were some screws installed. It's a requirement uh, for pre-built to have uh, certain 
safety features and, and meet regulations. But this latch can be pulled to release the panel now. So that slides back. So this is all functional uh, mechanical design here. Materials are all plastics, except for the, the chassis itself is standard steel, but panels plastic, uh, and then you got steel side panels as well. So uh, design-wise, I guess this, there's kind of a distinction to be made between functional mechanical design and asinine mechanical design. And here we're on the functional side, which is good, but you look at some of the other pre-belts we've taken apart in the past, uh, for example, Dell, where every single possible thing that can be a spring is a spring. It's not necessarily the right decision. So uh, in this case, given that it's coming to a DIY market, it's all the more important to make it properly functional and not just like weirdly difficult to work with. Uh, for the rest of this, this reminds me of the Intel NUC design, which I actually, we really like this aspect of the NUC where the top releases and removes. So this pulls out and it's actually, it's connected to a liquid cooler, so I can't remove it further than that right now. But uh, this pulls out, which is nice because for DIY or maintaining the system in general, obviously you can then completely remove obstructions to the interior of the case. So you can work on the system uh, and, and not have to try and navigate around a top panel. So pretty interesting. Um, pricing for the pre-built is high, $4,300 US from what we understand right now for the top SKU. There are gonna be other SKUs. They're doing 4070 Ti up to 4090. And then for the CPUs, this is a 13900KS, but the DIY version of the case is gonna be $300. And uh, we'll, we'll probably actually review it once it comes out. We don't normally do ITX unless it's a one-off, but uh, this is pretty interesting, so I'd like to look at it. Um, 300 though, definitely puts you in kind of that upper end of, of uh, enthusiast boutique case design. For the rest of this, so uh, like I said, 240 rad in the top. There's a PCIe Gen 4 riser that loops actually uh, from the motherboard under and up into the video card. So that ends up coming in over here. The video card, like I was saying, we'll look at in a separate piece, but uh, this has a radiator within it and it's got two 100 millimeter fans. So uh, the 100 mils mount just above the radiator to the shroud. The radiator has contained within it, a, so there's obviously a cold plate on the GPU core uh, with micro fins in it, as you would see in any AIO CLC solution. But the pumps, it's a dual pump design, and both of them are on one side of the radiator uh, rather than, for example, where the block is. And this is a design we've seen in the past, and um, we've, we've not really worked on something like that in a while, but that's the layout. Uh, challenges for something like this, uh, pros and cons. So pros, you pack a, potentially a lot of cooling into a smaller area. This ends up being about 20 millimeters shorter than a Founders Edition card, so it is technically smaller. As for whether it's actually better, I, I don't know. We'll have to test it and see. In the past, with some of the designs, like uh, one of the Asus ones that we looked at previously, the issue ended up being one of getting the air out of the system, out of the system here being the card. Uh, where they pushed all the air in, but then they kind of trapped it with the shrouding around the body of the card, so there's nowhere for the air to go. So it actually ran pretty warm. I don't know if that was Matrix or what it was called, but so we've seen it before. Sometimes it works well, sometimes it really doesn't. We'll have to test it and look at it. So on the front here, there's an additional door, and uh, this pops out, and there's a hot swap SSD in it. So it's an M.2 carrier, and it pulls out like this. The uh, entire uh, surrounding walls are plastic, except for the piece that connects directly to the SSD is aluminum. They're planning to include a thermal pad to attach between the SSD and the aluminum side of this. Uh, there's some LEDs embedded here. And as for the hot swap, it ends up going through USB type C. So that socket's in, it plugs into a USB type C male internally. And then that also means you could disconnect, plug into whatever laptop or something, if you wanted to do that, which actually for us, our use case is really interesting because we have to take a lot of files with us when we travel, and that's kind of cool that it, it just integrates it. Um, it's a little easier to work with. But I, I will say I am not 100% sold on the full plastic body other than the one aluminum sheet. SSDs are getting a lot hotter these days. There's not a lot of place for the air to, or well, for the heat to really leave this 
enclosure, and we've seen issues with that on other pre-builds in the past. So uh, that's that's one that's going to require some additional um, inspection or testing. But I would like to see aluminum or additional cooling on that. Rest of it, so there's a couple 2.5 inch drive spots. There's one on the front, there's one on the bottom. The power supply has this bracket it can attach to. And you might have noticed there's a VRM heat sink that is missing in there, and that's right here. So this is the VRM heat sink. Uh, and we don't have a VRM spec, I've asked for one, but don't have that right now. For 13900 KS to go in there, it's gotta be at the, the higher end, uh, but there is a heat sink included at least. So dimensionally, this ends up being a roughly 15, well, 15 and some inches this direction. It's about seven inches wide and 11 tall. Uh, so in terms of ITX, the challenge, this is a larger ITX case because they're trying to fit a 4090. And that's the challenge right now where the sizing is massive on all these. So they start running three slot plus a lot of the time. Uh, length is also a challenge. And so the goal Acer is trying to hit is fit 4090 in a case without running into thermal issues. And the way they're going about that is pretty sensible, which is really just put the fans immediately against holes in the case. And it should be problem solved. It depends on where the air goes once it gets into the GPU, because it just dumps it into the system. Could cause a problem elsewhere. In this instance, because they're compartmentalizing it with effectively a wall in between, uh, hopefully these compartments of the case should be somewhat isolated and able to, uh, to, to breathe cool air, and then they all would just get shoved up through the radiator, which is going to be cooling the CPU. So your effective internal ambient, a little bit higher because it's breathing GPU air, uh, but uh, CPU AIOs are typically more equipped to deal with that extra heat load than, say, a GPU. Depends on how they configure the BIOS, though. Uh, speaking of, XMP is going to be on. I asked, so for the pre built XMP is supposed to be on, so we're gonna check when we get one in to make sure it's on, because that's been a massive problem for pre -built. But uh, the only other thing I have here, so we have some final thoughts and then uh, the DIY stuff. So $300, obviously on the high side for DIY, I think ITX enthusiasts are used to paying more for just about everything a lot of the time. Uh, but basically what you end up paying for is, is all the sort of mechanical elements. Whether or not that's a gimmick to you is, is going to be what determines if it actually makes sense to buy. The chassis is going to be painted black for DIY. For pre-built, it's, it's this color as I understand it. Uh, this has to do with some kind of EMI regulation or something. Um, pre built have a lot of weird regulations they have to jump through. Power supply is 850 watt. And then closing thoughts on it really are just this is kind of cool and I'm looking forward to actually testing it because in terms of assembly, it's intuitive, makes sense. Uh, this was the, the, on camera, this is the first time I actually walked through and properly took it all apart. We looked at it beforehand, got walked through, but um, I do like that it is uh, intuitive. And there are markers in places, like for example, some minor touches with this, these orange markings show you where to line up the feet on the headphone stand slash handle, which uh, Acer also went out of the way to note to us. They changed from some of the early pre-renders uh, images to elevate the handle off the top of the chassis to get it out of the airflow. So there's actually like a lot of thought that went into this, which is weird because there's normally not a lot of thought that goes into thermal design for pre -builds. So we went through the whole Orion X thing and then at the end, Acer was like, uh, we have one more thing. <laughs> so that's what this is. They're calling this zone zero. This is currently a prototype. It's not clear at this point whether Acer is gonna bring it to market or not, but that is uh, the intent. So this was made in collaboration with a modder based in Taiwan, and it's a carrying case for the Orion X. So it's not intended to be running oil inside of here, but uh, currently the prototype is made of uh, at least mostly, if not, well, if not nearly entirely out of aluminum. So it is kind of heavy, uh, but really high quality machining here on it. So I, I guess, I don't know the, machining specifics, but I'm assuming it was CNC'd or something uh, and done locally. Now there's this large plastic or acrylic sheet on the front. So we're gonna open this up. It's cool, it's cool design for a carrying case. This would be uh, enormously expensive if it were made as is, so there would have to be some mass production changes for it, but still really cool to show off. So there's these four 
switches down here. There's two levers on each side. Uh, we got to take the front off first, though. This is connected via these. Uh, they've got the eject button on it. Latches. So we're going to slide those back. This is a handmade prototype, so be a little careful with it. This is supposed to come straight up. And uh, that's a plastic piece, so there's the front of it. This is the system we just looked at. And then next we're going to release these latches. There's two more over here. Let me... Getting like arm, arm day in here at uh, Acer. Okay, so we'll release those as well. I think the only step left is to lift this. So this is the Zone Zero carrying case. That's the outer shell. Check out the thickness on the materials here. That's a lot of work, man. I can still smell the spray paint. This, they just got this prototype in yesterday. Looks really good. I mean, this modder did a great job. Sometimes we show some of the case mods at uh, like Gigabyte and Thermal Booth or Thermal Take Booths at Computex. Um, we showed the, uh, the one we used for Trivium previously. And then the Orion X lifts out and you're left with the base. And that's it. So they're going for a space capsule look. The remark I made was, wow, this would be extremely easy to brand or cross brand with something like Apex Legends or something like that, where you've got like the drop crates from the game. But uh, it looks pretty cool, not, um, not productized yet, and we'll see if it will be. Acer has asked that I sign this, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. This is the first sample. I just, just wanna be clear, Acer did ask me to do this. I am not vandalizing their product. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get the, let's do, um, let's just do right here. Also, I didn't make this, but I am putting my signature on it. So anyway, that's it for the Orion X and for the carrying case. Pretty interesting stuff. We'll have more on this for sure, because uh, I know Jeremy on the team in particular, he's built a lot of small form factor systems. He wrote the news article for the original Orion X coverage we did. And uh, I know he really wants to look at one. And Patrick does a lot of testing on pre-builds for us. So I'm sure he has some thermal tests in mind, but we'll check back once we have it. Otherwise, thanks for watching. As always, subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersnexus.net or patreon.com slash gamersnexus. It helps out directly, and we'll see you all next time.